if you have a camera that does not shoot high frame rates, like for example, this is the Red Komodo 6K and probably one of the biggest complaints you hear about this camera is the fact that it's not a high frame rate camera. Well, all is not lost. There's actually something really cool you can do in DaVinci Resolve to slow down your footage. So like, for example, I think the sweet spot on the Red Komodo is 5K resolution at 48 frames per second. In DaVinci Resolve, you can slow it down to make it look like 96 frames per second, which is pretty stinking awesome. So we're gonna show you how to do that in uh, DaVinci Resolve. And um, you get to see this cool little microphone contraption that I've built because, um, well, the furnace is running because it's super cold and I'm not willing to turn the furnace off and uh, brisk my three month old getting too cold and all that stuff. So we're just gonna have this Kind of Franklin, I kind of wish I had a boom arm right now. But anyways, I'm going to show you how to do this in DaVinci Resolve. It's super easy and there's no extra plugins or anything you have to purchase. It's just built right in to DaVinci Resolve. So real quick, let's just show you this little clip. This is 48 frames per second and we can confirm that by the metadata right here. We have 48 frames per second, project frame rate of 23976. The Red Komodo slows down the footage in camera. So we play it back, it looks like it's already slowed down, which is kind of cool. But when we slow it down in DaVinci Resolve, this is what it looks like slowed down looking like 96 frames per second. Pretty big difference between 48 frames per second and 96 frames per second. So how do we do this? It's really, really easy. First thing we want to do is open up the read time controls. I have a keyboard shortcut, which is just R, or you can right click and come up here to read time controls. I'm gonna move this over, click the drop down, change the speed to 50%. And when we play it back, it looks absolutely terrible and you never want to use this. Well, we're not done. Next thing we need to do is we're going to head over to the inspector tab and go to this read time and scaling option menu right here. Now there's four things to choose from, but honestly, the last two, I just leave at the project settings, which I've never changed in DaVinci Resolve. So we're just dealing with the default settings on DaVinci Resolve. But the first two, that's kind of where we're going to change things up. So with the read time process, you got a couple of options. You have project settings, nearest frame blend, and optical flow. The further down the list you go, the more intense it's gonna be on the computer. Now, we want this to look the best, so we're gonna choose optical flow. Now with motion estimation, it's the same story. At the top of the list, you got standard faster, which is going to be the least amount of quality, but it's gonna be more efficient on your computer. All the way down to speed warp, which is the most computer intensive, but it's going to give you the best results. We're looking for the best results, so we're gonna go with speed warp here. And now when you try to play it back, most likely your computer's not gonna play it back unless you have a really powerful computer. My camera or my computer is playing it back at 1.5 frames per second, which is pretty awful. So how do you actually play it back? Like right here, this is the clip slow down. How do we actually do that? Well, we're going to render this in place. So to do that, you just right click and go to render in place. However, I wanna just give you a quick little tip. Before you do that, create a bin in your media pool and call it speed warp or renders in place or whatever the case may be, whatever you wanna call it. The reason being is when you render this file in place, it's going to drop the new render file into whatever bin that is already selected. So I just decided to create a specific bin just for these render in places. That way I kind of know where they all are and they're all in one place. So what we do here is we click render in place. I choose to just use Apple ProRes 422 and then include all of the grade and effects, whatever that you've done. You're going to click render and then you go to whatever folder. I've just created a folder called speed warp because that's what my bin is called. And we're going to just click open and then let this render. All right, now once this is finished rendering, you can see that this is now a .mov file. We go click over here to the inspector and you can see it's an Apple ProRes 422 codec as opposed to an R3D format, but you can see it still has the whole file name. So that's why you see R3D in here. And you can see render3.mov has been dropped into this speed warp bin. And this is titled if we zoom in render three, so it matches. And then we play it back and boom, it looks like 96 frames per second footage and looks really good. So this is super awesome. Now, if you've applied a grade to it or 
uh, you're probably not going to grade your project before you edit. So what happens if you shot in a raw format and you want to be able to access the raw controls? Well, what I actually like to do is once I've created this file, I'll just option click and drag up and that creates a copy of the file. And then the full file down below, you right click and then decompose to original. And then it's back to a .r3d file. And then you have your optical flow and speed warp settings all there. So if you want to grade that footage real quick, you could turn off optical flow, whatever. That way you can apply the grade to your R3D files and just make sure you change it back to optical flow and speed warp so that you can actually get the desired effect when you render this footage out. Now, this is not a perfect solution out there. This is just simply not going to work on every shot. For example, if we take a look at this shot right here, you can see when I play it back, there's like this weird motion artifact kind of going on in the jacket so much to the point where like I definitely wouldn't use this in any edit and also this shot right here take a look at these plates right here they just got this like weird motion artifact kind of thing going on to the point where I definitely wouldn't use any of those kind of shots in the edit so that's just something to consider however there are some times where it works really good like this right here, this is 48 frames per second, and we hop over to the slowed down, it looks like 96 frames per second. A little bit going on with the lettering on that pump, but I don't think anybody would ever notice what's going on there, so I would certainly use that, especially for a quick cutaway shot. And what I found, there are a couple things to get the best results out of this optical flow speed warp process. Number one is you wanna have really smooth camera movement, whether you're on a gimbal or uh, if you're handheld like this shot right here and you just have minimal camera movement or slow camera movement, or you're on a tripod or something like that. When you have like a lot of motion going on and camera shake going on, DaVinci Resolve has a much harder time trying to figure out what pixels to recreate and all that kind of, I don't really understand the, how it actually works, but I found with a lot of camera movement shake, it's just not gonna work out that good. The other thing is having a scene with a lot of really fine details in as fast moving details, it's probably not gonna resolve the best, uh, the best results. So for example, right here, this uh, skiing footage or snowboarding footage right here, all these trees in the background, that's got a lot of fine details going on that's moving pretty fast. If we go to the slow down version, over here, look, he's got this like weird motion, wavy nastiness going on. And it just doesn't work because there's just too much details that especially are out of focus that DaVinci Resolve just like doesn't know what to do with. So stuff like, you know, waves and water droplets, or rain or something like that, probably not gonna yield the best results. Another thing to consider is if you have any noise or grain in your footage, what's gonna happen when you slow that footage down using this method, you're actually gonna slow down that noise and grain in your footage as well. So what I like to do is I like to actually add some grain, film grain, either an overlay or use dehancer or something like that after the fact to kind of speed up that grain to kind of make it look like it was in camera. And that just really helps kind of sell that shot and make it look like it was actually shot like that and not done in post-production. And the last thing to consider if you know you wanna slow down the footage in post is consider cranking up your shutter speed if you're on a mirrorless camera to like one over 500th of a second or one over 1000 or something like that. If you're on a cinema camera like the Komodo or something that uses shutter angle, consider using something like a 45 degree shutter angle or something. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna reduce the motion blur in your shot. And the benefit there is that just gives more detail and a clearer image for DaVinci Resolve to analyze so that it can have a much clearer image and be able to possibly even yield better results than if you were at a traditional 180 degree shutter angle. So definitely not a replacement for high frame rate cameras, but in a pinch, in a lot of scenarios, if, uh, if you're filming it right and the conditions are right, it actually looks really good. So I hope you found that helpful or useful and sorry about the microphone, but um, I'm trying to keep my kid warm and um, that's pretty much it. I hope you found this helpful or useful and hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.